Hey everyone. Um, this short little video is going to explain how we uh, explain the difference between nominal GDP and real GDP. And this is going to be the trick economists use to get around the problem I described in the previous video. And just as a reminder, the previous video pointed out that, hey, look, what we want with our measure of the size of the economy is the total amount of stuff produced. Okay? And in the example we were working with at that time, notice that the total amount of apples and oranges produced in 2013 and 2014 is exactly the same. So ideally, our measure of the size of the economy ought to be exactly the same for both um, years. The problem was, in the previous video, I pointed out that, hey, if we use market prices um, to value goods and services, then our measure of the size of the economy can change if prices change even if quantities remain constant. So for example, nominal GDP in 2013, and technically think of nominal GDP as defined as uh, the value of goods and services produced when you're using prices from the current year. Okay? Well, the price of an apple in 2013 is one dollar, the quantity of apples is ten, so nominal GDP for 2013 will be one times ten equals ten. So we had nominal GDP of um, in 2010 is, or 2013 is ten dollars. Now if I were to do this calculation for 2014 I would have nominal GDP for 2014 equals two dollars times ten apples produced equals twenty dollars. Boom. So we did these calculations in the previous video and notice the size of the economy doubles even though the quantities remain the same. So that was the problem. So here we're going to want to try to figure out well how do economists um, get around that problem so that our measure of the size of the economy isn't in some sense polluted by changes in prices. Well, it turns out that it's actually relatively easy to do. And the way we do it is we basically we pick a year arbitrarily and we call it the base year. And so I'm going to go ahead and say the base year is 2013. And so let's say this is, oh, the base year is going to be 2013. In principle, I could have used 2014 or any year to do it, but I'm going to go ahead and use 2013. And what that tells us is real GDP is going to be GDP calculated using prices from the base year. So if I were to write down real GDP in 2013 is going to be the price from the base year, which just so happens to be 2013, times the quantity produced in 2013 is going to be equal to one dollar, because that's the price during the base year, times the quantity, which is ten. One times ten is ten dollars. So real GDP in 2013 is going to be ten dollars. Okay, so far nothing all that exciting. Okay, the real change is going to happen when we um, calculate nominal and real GDP for 2014. All right, so let me erase these things, make them consistent for 2014. And let's see the price changes. That, that. All right. So nominal GDP for 2014 is going to be the price from 2014 times the quantity from 2014. And the price in 2014 is $2. So 2 times let me erase these. So two times two dollars per apple times ten apples is twenty. So that's the twenty dollars we have calculated right here. Now real GDP in 2014 is going to be the price from the base year times the quantity from 2014. All right. Now here's where the differences come in. All right. You see the price in the base year is not the same as the price in 2014. Why? Because we said 2013 is going to be the base year. That means when we're calculating real GDP, we use prices from the base year, meaning we're going to use the price of $1. Okay? That means when we calculate real GDP for 2014, it's going to be the price from the base year, or $1, times 10, the quantity of apples produced, equals $10. Right. So if you take a look at that, what we've done is we've arbitrarily said we're going to make 2013 the base year, we're going to freeze prices in that year, and we're going to calculate the total amount of economic activity using prices from the base year. Okay. 
as a result, the, if you're keeping prices constant, the only way that output can change is if quantities change. And so our measure of real GDP, notice it's $10 in 2013 and $10 in 2014. So there's no change in the total amount of apples um, produced. There's also no change in total amount of uh, real GDP. So this little trick of measuring um, pr or using prices from the base year succeeds in purging the effects of prices from our GDP calculation. And that's really the, th the way you should start. Uh, you should think of nominal versus real GDP. Nominal GDP is uh, the total value of goods and services produced using prices from the current year, meaning I, if I'm calculating nominal GDP for 2014, I'm using prices from 2014. And real GDP is the total amount of um, stuff produced, or real GDP is you know, the value of the um, uh, of economic activity using prices from the base year. Okay? So it's the price from the base year times the quantity in 2014 gives you real GDP of 10 in 2014. Now you might have noticed that nominal GDP and real GDP are the same for the base year 2013. That's no accident. Mathematically it has to uh, turn out to be the case. And the reason it has to turn out to be the case is because if 2013 is the base year, we're using prices from 2013 to calculate um, nominal or to calculate real GDP. And if we're using nominal, calculating nominal GDP, we're using prices from 2013 to calculate nominal GDP. And since those two prices are the same, nominal GDP and real GDP are going to be equal. All right. Now, there are other problems with uh, measuring GDP, but uh, I'll leave those for you to read about in your book. Here, I just wanted to point out that, hey, one of the problems with measuring the size of the economic activity was well, you've got to go ahead and add apples and oranges together some way, so we went ahead and used market prices to do that calculation. Using market prices to do that calculation introduces the problem that, well, our measure of output can change even, even um, if quantity is constant because prices have changed. Well, this little trick of going from um, making a distinction between nominal and real GDP solves that problem by saying we're going to pick it a year arbitrarily, call it 2013, make it the base year, and we're always going to use prices from that base year to calculate uh, real GDP. Alright, that's it for this video.